I guess for the goodness of us to let other people see this event at their own convenience if they couldn't join us tonight. Um, we do want everybody muted so that we're able to hear our guest speakers clearly, so there's not all the background. Um, but if you have questions or comments throughout the event, by all means, use the chat box and, and ask questions, and Robin will be monitoring that as well. So um, without further ado, I'd like to pass it on to our hostess of the evening, um, Robin Murphy from the Gerstacker Institute. Hi, thank you, Kathleen. Thank you to everyone for joining us this evening. It's great to have such a wonderful turnout and to see so many familiar faces. It's been a long time since I've seen so many of you. Um, as Kathleen mentioned, Laurel, um, our director, and Brittany, our assistant director, are joining as well. So hopefully we can catch up afterwards. Um, we're just so excited to be able to share this opportunity with you. You know, we feel so fortunate that we have so many generous alumni that give back to Albion and students in so many ways. Um, so tonight we are going to focus on the significance of supporting students with uh, their professional growth um, and doing so with internships and employment opportunities. So we're joined tonight by alumnus Matt Jonah, class of 94. He's the co-owner and CEO of Plum Market and also a current student. Um, she's a junior, Allie Dasky, and she just completed an internship at Plum Market, so she can talk about that experience and share that with us. So to go ahead and kick things off, I'd like to ask each of our guests to introduce themselves. Matt, would you go first, please? Sure, well, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Matt Shona, CEO of Plum Market. Um, very proud alumni of Albion College and super excited to be here tonight to talk to all of you. Uh, it was great to have Allie work with us uh, the last few months and uh, I'm excited for her to share all her good experiences and uh, all the fun times she had with us. Thank you, Matt. Allie, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm Allie. I'm a junior. I'm on the swim team. Um, I'm a finance major, anthropology minor. Um, I'm just finished at Plum Market, but I don't really have anything else be besides that I'm a student still, so. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And uh, still working on securing an internship for the summer. So if anybody knows of opportunities, connect with Allie. Sorry, I had to get that plug in for you. <laughs> All right. So Matt, we'd love to hear more about your career and kind of what you've been up to since your time at Albion. Sure, so um, when I graduated from Albion, uh, I started working in a grocery store and um, it was, uh, I really didn't know what I wanted to do at first. And I just uh, kind of fell in love with the food and beverage business and um, worked for a chain that was, uh, that was part of was kind of a family business. It was, we ended up selling it to um, Whole Foods Market in the year 2000. And I ended up working for Whole Foods uh, for a couple of years. They moved me to San Francisco. I actually worked under their former CEO, Walter Robbs. Um, and then when I left Whole Foods, um, I started working, I had to not compete actually uh, with them. So I, when I sold my last business to them, they put me up, it's called a covenant not to compete for five years. So I went to the CEO and I said, listen, you know, no hard feelings. I just want to, you know, kind of go and start my own chain and kind of got mad at me. He's like, no, 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 you're not doing that. You know, and you know, we, we don't want you in business right now. I was like, whoa, you know, so, uh, so I ended up working indirectly with Starbucks coffee and um, it was something I could do. And I helped Starbucks grow from the time for just a few stores in Michigan to over 40. And then I left and I started a market in 2006. So fast forward, um, 14 years later, uh, we're about a $200 million company, totally private. Um, I just owned the company with my brother, Mark, uh, no investors. Uh, I'm the CEO. Uh, we have about 950 full-time team members. Um, we are in, a lot of people don't realize this because we just started pushing our expansion out of Michigan, but we're in Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, soon to be in Ohio, 
uh, we're opening, we're really excited, we're opening a, a store, a large format store in Washington, D.C., and a large format in Hollywood, California. And um, we're, we're kind of the, uh, in, the, in our industry, not to bore you all, is in the natural products industry, we're kind of like the, the next generation of the Whole Foods. And um, but we're also a tech company. I'm kind of uh, obsessed with being a technology company. So we have three different ways to deliver groceries to you through Instacart, Shipped, and our own Plum Market drive up and delivery service. Uh, we have an e-commerce division uh, that ships product to all 50 states. Um, we have a food service division that operates corporate and school cafeterias. We, do, we have 14 locations in that division. And we have small format stores um, in Detroit's airport. We're opening Dallas's airport. Uh, we actually are in a couple of university campuses like Butler University, um, Oakland University, and we're opening at Case Western University next year as well. So we're kind of a very diversified food and beverage company. Great. But Great. Albion, I'll tell you, so, so if to talk about Albion, Albion, what did it do for me? Um, well, the biggest thing it did was it gave me a lot of confidence to go into the business world and not be afraid of failure. So, you know, if I'm going to give anybody a takeaway tonight, you know, life is pretty short. I think the pandemic is uh, proving that. So if you want to do something that's big in your life, in your career, go for it. And I did that and it paid off for me uh, several times. Um, the only thing is um, I'm a little unusual because I, I take a lot of risk, you know, um, you know, I have invested in a lot of other different businesses that I can share tonight besides Plum Market. Um, I have, a, but it's also all about people and surrounding yourself with the right people. I never forgot a class that I had in Albion and the professor kept pounding that you're only good as the people around you. And I'm sure you hear that a lot. And there's a lot of truth to that. So, you know, I have a great CFO. He used to be a CPA for 18 years. Um, I have an amazing corporate counsel. Um, great vice president of operations. Just, I'm really, really blessed. And it's really, it, it, I guess the reason why they like working for Plum Market or, or me as a leader is because I treat them like family. And I think that that's a very important tool. And that's something that this professor kept pounding uh, at me. I had some professors I didn't like at Albion, um, but I don't remember too much um, who I didn't like. I just remember who I did like. So, but I, I loved Albion. And I, I loved it so much, I made my, my oldest son, Andrew, who's on the, meet, on the uh, seminar tonight, uh, join us. But I wasn't a good student. I didn't what get was that grades. last part? I didn't get good grades. I, my grades were terrible. And look where, where you've gone. Yeah, I, it's, I was bottom of the barrel, believe it or not, in grades. Andrew, are you chuckling about that? Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> this is recorded, so you can, you know, use it for later use. <laughs> so, you know, with all your successes, um, you know, Allie is not the first student um, from Albion that has interned with you, Matt. Um, you know, what is it about bringing students on board, you know, um, because it's, it's a lot of work for you as an employer yeah. to put them through training and get them up to speed knowing, you know, an internship may only take three months. Um, you know, what is it about that that keeps you kind of coming back and, and yeah, you know, presenting that so, offer? So in life, you know, you get to a point in life where if you've been very successful, and I still think we're just beginning, actually. I tell our team members all the time, we, I'm not going to be really happy until we're a billion dollar company. But you know, 200 million isn't bad. So, you know, why not give back, you know? So to me, you know, giving back a chance for uh, a student to get an internship and you just, you don't really, you can only learn so much in a classroom. I think all of you know that. And doing an internship, you really see what it's like. And I remember um, when I would work for people when I was in college, I never technically did an internship through Albion. Um, but I did um, go to Europe and I guess it's sort of an internship, but um, you just, you learn so much. It's just such a different experience when you're in the real world working. So 
to me, it's giving back. I would take an Albion student all year round. You know, if anyone needs an internship, you got it. Um, and we have a great person, Jennifer Alley, who I, I think you like a lot. Jennifer is amazing. And she kind of brings them in and she brought Nathan in, she brought Allie in and really took care of them. And, you know, um, it's even if they don't want to work for Plum Market, even though we offered Allie a job when she gets out of college um, and Nathan, it's still just having that, you know, that experience, you know. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Why not? It's a great way to, it's rewarding. Fantastic, thank you, thank you. And it, you know, it's so helpful for the students too. I think Allie, this is a great opportunity to hear from you and you know, what your experience was with Plum Market and you know, how you feel it's helped prepare you for your next step. Yeah, so I actually started working for Plum in May, but I just was like a regular team member, not the internship yet. Um, and this was while I was doing summer school through Gerstacker, which was really cool because um, that summer school had really prepared me for like getting the internship um, and working in the professional world. Um, so it was cool to have that before and also like the background of just working for Plum before doing an internship with Plum was really cool. So I worked in the apothecary department, which is like the health and wellness. So all the vitamins and supplements and stuff like that, which was cool that they offered that to me because that's something that I was really interested in. And I think it's cool to like work for something that you're actually interested in, um, if that makes sense. So like, I, um, so I worked in the apothecary department and then I was able to continue my internship in the apothecary department. And I worked with Tina and Haley who were the director and the support. And I did a lot of the um, upper level stuff. So I, they taught me how to be a buyer for one of the sub departments. I worked on like price margins and price targets um, and price auditing and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, so that was really cool to dive deeper um, since the summer having worked on the floor and then being able to move up to the upper level and see how things were kind of run in the department. Um, and it was really cool to work for Plum because they have all the five, they have the five like large format locations and I was able to travel to all five and meet and develop relationships with the team members and not only the team members in the apothecary department, but like the whole store as well, which was really cool because uh, the previous like summer jobs, just summer jobs I've had, they've all been like smaller um, places, but I never really became friends with any of the workers that I wasn't working directly with. So even like everyone at Plum was just so nice and welcoming and like always willing to help. And like you said, Jennifer set up the internship. She pretty much planned out the entire internship for me and catered it to what I was looking for. So that was really cool um, and a great experience. So it's very thankful. Good, good. And I know that our previous intern um, also had a wonderful experience at Plum. I was disappointed I couldn't come out to visit you guys in person because I had a field day when I went to Plum Market and um, had to restrain myself from doing too much shopping. So it's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> we like that. Yeah, I'm already thinking about making a return trip here. Um, I've got some things I want to stock up on. So Matt, um, I know that you've talked about um, expanding, you know, even beyond Plum Market. Do you want to talk a little bit more about, you know, what those ventures look like? Yeah, so like I said, Plum Market has large format stores, small format stores, food service operations, e-commerce, delivery, all kinds of, all kinds of different divisions. But we're, uh, you know, I just loving business in general and kind of being obsessed with it in a way. Um, I've invested in uh, quite a few other companies. So direct investments, not just buying a stock, like I own a part of the company um, in the kind of the early stage, as you call it, and they call it the beta stage. At least I call it the beta stage. So I'm, I own a company in um, space in San Diego. I've invested in it called Optify. So they do um, eyeglasses for uh, doctor's offices, eye doctor's offices. So you go there, it's think 5% of the market. When you go to an eye doctor, only 5% of the time you walk out and buy glasses or lenses. Um, 
So this gentleman came up with this, uh, basically the software for eye doctors where you're sitting in your chair and your eye exam is done and they say, well, we'll send you a link right now to your phone and we can help you order your new glasses and or your new contacts. And um, it's uh, doing extremely well. Um, the second company I invested in is called Campfire. It's an interactive, it's based in uh, Ann Arbor. Uh, it's, uh, he is a gentleman by the name of Pradeep and he's actually a roommate and good friends of Jeff Bezos from Amazon. So he's, Pradeep is probably one of the most successful tech guys in Michigan, but nobody really knows it. Um, he sold his last company for almost $100 million to Microsoft. Um, so I know him through his wife, actually. His wife was doing graphic design work. She actually came up with the Plum Market name and did the original logos. So um, I invested in his company, which to get right to the point, it's, a, it's a, basically the next level of a lot of companies when they're bidding big projects like Magna, for example, is a big automotive company supplier. They're 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 using excel spreadsheets and word documents and they got it's all very clunky he came up with a software that for bidding uh, basically large contracts and um it just got a, a 60 million dollar valuation um and i'm excited to be an investor in that um and then i invested in a company um called fizzy uh which is um i'm sure all the students here know um high moon or um the uh, white cloth craze. So fizzy is a, so in Australia, there's none of that. So this is the first hard seltzer product in Australia or in the Pacific Rim. So this is a crazy story. So they raised to help you all, if you, you get out and want to go for your dream on your, your business venture, they raised $3 million and had no sales. And, I, and this is how crazy I am. I invested in it that early because I saw the market opportunity. I said, you know, it's going crazy in the States. It's going crazy in, in Europe right now. You know, they're first to market. It was, but you know, this is the thing too, if I'm gonna leave you with anything tonight, it's all about investing in the people too. The guy that kind of said, I'm gonna do this was a Bacardi executive for 20 years in the Pacific Rim. So he knows China, he knows the Philippines, he knows Indonesia, he knows all that market really well. So, um, they just launched and uh, hopefully I don't lose my money, but it's, uh, it's uh, doing pretty well from what I understand. Um, I haven't even tasted the product. <laughs> so, and then I'm, in, I'm invested in a company called Ruru that does online tutoring. Uh, I've invested in, um, I can go on and on, but I'm not gonna bore you guys. So, so um, I keep myself pretty busy. It really sounds like it. And, you know, if you need somebody to go to Australia and do yeah. some taste testing, yeah. I'll volunteer. Wait, oh, there's some other hands. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Allie, I'm glad we if take accept, another if internship. Allie, if you accept the job after you graduate, we'll send you there. Yeah, I'll, I'll do another internship <laughs> with them, gladly. <laughs> and if you don't accept that, I think you're nuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I love this. And I love, you know, Matt, that you are sharing, you know, some advice that you have learned, you know, throughout your career, talking about taking risks. Um, you know, you didn't know what you wanted to do, um, but you kind of fell into something and you, you ran with it. Um, so I love that. Um, I think that's great advice for anyone, you know, regardless of where you are in your career. And then, you know, to your point about, people, you know, having that strong network, um, knowing the right people and, you know, reaching out um, to inquire about opportunities. And then too, you know, making sure that you've got the right people on board and treating them right, like family. Um, that's just so valuable and so important. Um, you know, I feel like a lot of people say, like you said, you're in the tech business. A lot of people will also say they're in the people business, regardless of, you know, what they, the actual product may be. Um, so I appreciate the advice that you're sharing with us tonight. So one other thing I want to mention is my new theme is, uh, we're in the food and beverage business. We're in the tech business and we're in the data business. And that's something that I want you all to know, I think is the next big theme is data is we not to bore you again, but we're, 
We use a company called Medallia, if you want to check it out. Four Seasons Hotels uses them, uh, Lululemon uses them, Apple Computer. They're a company that you do surveys. So like we sent every guest that ordered a Thanksgiving meal from us a survey, and we get data from that. We have a loyalty program. So we have over 260,000 people in our loyalty program with a really robust app. And the biggest reason why we're giving people 2% back if they shop in our locations is because we want their data. So if you study any great business now, it's about a great product, great people, technology, 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 and data. I think those are the four key ingredients in business nowadays. And you got to be up. And I think having the data forces you to be obsessed with your with your customer. And that's what I always preach too. Absolutely. People have choices. You want to make them come back. Like me, I want to go back. Yeah, we like that. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, so we're getting, you know, kind of on the the end of our time. We've got, you know, some more. Um, a, a few more minutes. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat. I don't know if anybody has any questions for Matt um, that you'd like to to send his way. We can definitely take questions. I really, I just, can I ask a, can, can I ask oh, a question? Sorry, can I ask a question? Hi, Art. Verbally. So, hey, Matt, Art Gray, class of '92. Uh, so. Uh, I'm always intrigued by people that take the level of risk that you do and, you know, for the variety of what you've gotten exposed to, other than your story of the uh, wife who did your logo and you get connected uh, from her to the other individual over in Ann Arbor, like, how do you make these connections? Is it just through relationships or like, how do you make that connectivity and those types of opportunities? Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's a great question. So, it's really, I think, just, you know, being in front of people and uh, having a great personality. I think people like to be around people that have good personalities, um, you know, and I think like, okay, the, the way I connected with Pradeep, Kate knew that I, I was always really into creating new businesses. And I think she noticed that I was a risk taker because I had brought her a few other businesses to do branding and and logos for and, and marketing. So she, um, I think that's why she put two and two together and introduced us. I'm going to assume that doesn't mean that I don't have a good personality. Is that? No, no, no. I'm just saying that. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. I'm, yeah, I'm, I get it. Yeah. I'm joking. No, that's, that's good, good, good perspective. I appreciate that. But I did hear that, um, like, Jeff Bezos has a terrible personality. So maybe that's not completely true. Different that's what that's what Pradeep told me. He goes, he's kind of a kind of a boring guy. You know, maybe that's why he's in Hollywood now. <laughs> there you go. So we do have some questions in the chat. Um, Ethan um, commented with regards to a lot of the data collection slash technology activities. Is that something you guys try to hire internally for? or do you mainly try to partner with outside vendors? So that's a good question too. So we have about, uh, about nine full-time people in IT um, and it's, it's, they're never not busy. Um, we outsource all kinds of different parts of our IT. Uh, we use Microsoft, obviously. Who doesn't use Microsoft? Um, so we use, the, we use um, Twilio, which I'm a big fan of Twilio. Great stock, by the way, if you get any of you buy stocks. Uh, we use Fastly, another great stock. Um, check them out. Um, we use um, Cloudflare. We use uh, SMS. We use uh, ADP. We use Medallia. We use um, Zuckler. Um, all kinds of different pieces that go into what makes us tech in IT. And I'm missing hey, some. Matt, this is Ethan. I, thanks for the response. Uh, yeah, I, I think part of kind of that question was, um, you know, when you read about a lot of different businesses and different industries, right, a lot of times leadership always will say, we need to focus on our core business, right? We need to focus on what we're good at and that's where our energy needs to go. 
And then if we want to do these other things, that's great. But it's kind of this, this challenge of sometimes the belief is try and keep everything in house and, and really have this, um, you know, all that skill set internal or does it make sense to, it sounds like what you guys have done is kind of build this, this fabric of different relationships to achieve your goals. Yeah, I, I don't think any company can do IT themselves. I think basically most companies outsource parts. Uh, they use pieces of technology and they bring it all together for their platforms. So that's what we do. It's the only way to really make it work. Right. No, thank you. Thank you, Ethan. We also have another question in the chat from Justin Fragnoli. What were some of your biggest successes or wins in overcoming supply chain issues in your industry during the initial onset of the pandemic? So that's a great question. Um, I get that a lot, actually. Um, I would say that we were fortunate because we're in the natural channel. So the we didn't get it hit as hard um, because we have direct relationships with a lot of the vendors we do business with, at least on our produce and our meat and our seafood. And um, where the supply chain got really constrained was in the household aisle, but we do all natural products in the household aisle. So we did have a run for like crazy things like cleaning, disinfectants, uh, toilet paper, of course. Um, but you know, eggs at first, um, but it wasn't crazy. We, we stayed in business pretty well. Um, our same store sales are over 20% right now for the year. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's not really up. Um, the funniest thing is, <laughs> is there's a huge run on alcohol, believe it or not. That was, uh, people were partying like it was New Year's every day. So our alcohol sales, they're up 70% for the year, wine, beer, and liquor. And then we had a, there's packaging issues in that category. So like you couldn't, like high noon for all you Albion students right now, you know, we couldn't get a high noon for like four weeks. And I know the CEO of Myers and we're friendly. Um, and he's like, he texts me one day and he's like, are you getting high noon? And I'm like, no. And he's like, um, because we can't get it either because we thought maybe they're lying to us. But, um, so it's, it's a, um, I think it was more of a packaging issue than a supply issue at times, if that makes sense. But the supply chain is, it's corrected itself and uh, even the large chains like Kroger and, and Myers, um, they're, they're in stock pretty much right now. Thank you. Stores <laughs> just look bad. They're not as nice as ours. They're kind of dirty. No, not as nice as Plum Market. All right, um, it is 7.59. If anybody has any final questions, um, we are going to go ahead and, um, you know, have everybody come off of mute so that you can say hi, um, share a story. Um, because this does now conclude um, the formal part of this evening. I do want to thank Matt and Allie both for your time and joining us. Um, we really appreciate hearing your stories, hearing the impact um, that Albion has had. You know, Allie, for you as a student, Matt as a student, and you know now in your career, and the fact that you are giving back so graciously. So we thank you for that. And so please. Um, take the time to come off of mute, um, ask more questions. And um, again, it's so great to see everybody here. So look forward to catching up with you. Thank you all. <laughs>